people. We praise and worship God, but we can also rule in this life, and prayers of rulership are very important, and we've had some feedback on, on the previous message that uh, this has been uh, changing people's uh, way of thinking, way of praying, mm -hmm. and uh, to recognize that they are in uh, a position of rulership, and they need to take that authority and, and do things about it. And so tonight, we're talking about overpowering rebel forces. Uh, well, this is not a natural kind of message. It's a supernatural mm -hmm. message and talking about spiritual things. And, and the, uh, the, the term comes from uh, the passage in 2 Corinthians 10. And I'm going to ask Sherry to read a couple of verses here. But let me give you a little background about it first. Paul is writing to the people at Corinthians, uh, the Corinthian church, so in Corinth, in the city of Corinth. So he's writing to them, and he's saying that uh, he is uh, going to deal with some people who have been rebelling against his authority. They've uh, rebelled against kingdom authority, and he's going to uh, do something about it, and, and he's going to explain what he's going to do, and that's where we get the message uh, uh, about tonight and the title of it, uh, because we all have to deal with uh, some people who are resisting the kingdom, <laughs> resisting the authority of God. And God has put you in a position of, of rulership. And we'll talk about these uh, issues more as we go along. But I'm going to ask you to read these verses. I want you to know that these are very uh, familiar verses with all of us, but I want you to see the context. He's talking about some people who are rebelling against God's authority and how he's going to deal with them. All right, Sherry? 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. This is out of the New Living Translation. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. Okay, so there's four basic things uh, that I see in these two passages that, that Paul's going to be dealing with. One is a mindset of their reasoning. And so this is coming in and, and setting up their reasoning and their logic, how they approach uh, problems. And then he talks about false arguments. He's mm -hmm. going to deal with false arguments. And then he talks about proud obstacles, the third thing. And, and proud, uh, that says there's going to be pride mm -hmm. uh, that's going to come up. And so there, there's some people rebelling against the authority of God and, and uh, not doing what God wants them to do. And, and this is one of the big areas. It's proud obstacles from knowing uh, God. And, and then for the fourth, and this is where the word rebel comes from. It's rebellious mm -hmm. thoughts, rebellious thoughts. Now, I know that you've heard this uh, passage uh, preached mm -hmm. many times. And it's about our own thoughts, that we have spiritual weapons uh, to take our thoughts captive. But Paul's not really talking about his thoughts or even your thoughts. He's talking about some people out there who have uh, rebelled against his authority, but he has a strategy to deal with them. Now, what I want us to do in this message today is take this strategy that Paul uses to apply it to your family and my family. Yes, thank it's you. not limited to the family. It, uh, it it can also apply to your mayor and to your government officials yes, you. in your city, and so you you can use this same strategy with all government officials and, and with uh, officials in your school district. And you can use it in all of those areas. But my application tonight is primarily with family um, because I know that I have authority in my uh, family and I, I need to take that authority and I need to be praying uh, for my ch uh, children. They're grown, I have three grown children and they have uh, spouses. So the, I have my children and their spouses, and then I have seven uh, grandchildren, which I, pr I pray for. And so some of the prayers uh, that I pray for my family come out of this. But you know, 
I, I'm not restricted in my influence uh, just to those uh, 13 people, uh, in addition to my covering of Sherry. But I also have nephews and nieces uh, that uh, their parents have died. They were, they were my siblings, but they uh, some of those have died. And so I have ne uh, nephews and nieces uh, that I can pray for and that God has given me authority and influence in their lives and a responsibility to pray. So what we're going to be doing tonight then is talking about uh, how we can pray uh, for our household. And that includes not only our uh, children, but also those connected with them and uh, wherever uh, God leads you. And we're going to try to make this very practical tonight. Now, mm -hmm. where I mentioned in these two uh, verses, uh, four different things that Paul was going to deal with. And where did those things come from? And James 3.15 uh, pretty much explains uh, what we're dealing with. It's worldly knowledge. Okay, read mm -hmm. this out of the voice. Uh, but the other translations say things that are very similar. But James 3.15, the wisdom of this world should never be mistaken for heavenly wisdom. It originates below in the earthly realms with the demons. Oh, oh. wow. Did you, did you see wow. that? Wow. Wow. James wrote it. It, it, there are demonic roots in worldly knowledge. Oh, He's referring wow. to it. And what am I talking about worldly knowledge? Well, that's that's what our children and our uh, spiritual children that uh, they're as they've grown up, they've encountered it with all of their classmates and with their uh, teachers, with their uh, teachers and, and those in authority and in the government. It's coming from the government, from the media. It's worldly knowledge. It's worldly knowledge. And James said, uh, "This is not from above. This wisdom is not, not from, from above." above. But it is infiltrated by the demonic, uh, by their forces, demonic forces, and uh, by the plans of the enemy uh, to use against all of us. And so uh, things are maybe getting darker and darker in many parts of the world. And that's what the Bible said in the last, last times. Days. It's going to get darkness. It's going to get darker and darker. And so we need to know how to be praying for those in our family and those people around us. And of course, uh, you, you start here, you start with the people uh, that are closest to you, but then you can begin to reach out to others because the strategies, see, the strategies that are supernatural and they are powerful, they will make a, an impact. And you might say, well, I, I just don't have the, that kind of influence in my country, but or my city, but you think about Elijah. Why did Elijah have the authority and the, and the responsibility to turn the heart of a nation back to God? Because he had been standing in the presence of God, and he saw in the word of God uh, what he could be praying and what God wanted him to pray, and he prayed those things, and, and first it stopped the rain for three and a half years, then he brought down the fire, then he prayed and brought the, the brought rain. the rain back. And so <clears throat> it was just one person. And I like what James said. He said, uh, he's just like you and me. Yeah. Elijah is just like you and me. And you might think, well, I just don't have. He's like you and me. He <laughs> has authority to bring revival to his nation. Hallelujah. You are like Elijah. You can stand in God's presence and hear what he's saying to you. And you can pray it and change situations. So we're just building. We're building on what we've been talking about in days past, and we'll continue to move in this direction. But tonight, I'm really talking about we know that all of our children and uh, the people around us, they're dealing with worldly knowledge that's coming from the government, the media, and uh We've got, and it sets up some real problems in the way they think. It's their reasoning, their logic. It, it's the uh, false uh, arguments that they have. It's it's the obstacles from knowing God and proud obstacles and, and, and even uh, the rebellious thoughts. So how are we going to deal with them? That's the whole point of the message tonight. 
And a woman contacted me this week, and, and uh, she said that all of her children were grown, and they had been raised up in the church and following the Lord, but when they got grown, they went out into the world, and they went far away from God. They turned their back on God. And so I wrote a prayer, which I pray for my children, and I've uh, ad adopted that to her, and I sent this back to her, said, uh, this is the way I pray for your children, and you can pray it too. It all comes from 2 Corinthians 10. I'm just giving you an, an example of how you can take a passage that God gives you that becomes alive to you. See, this mm. passage has become alive to me mm. uh, that uh, I need to be uh, strategizing and then uh, deciding how to pull down things. And I can't do it in my natural. It's by the power of the Holy Spirit Amen. and the direction of the Holy Spirit and the truth of the word of God. When the, all of that comes together, I can pray a prayer uh, that's going to deal with those four issues that Paul uh, points out in 2 Corinthians 10 verses 4 and 5. And so this is the prayer uh, that I sent this woman uh, and I said, I'm praying it over your children, and I want you to pray daily. And this is also a prayer that I pray uh, over my children. Hallelujah. So go ahead and read this, uh, Sherry. This okay. is just an example of how we can address those obstacles to knowledge of God, to the strongholds. See, there's strongholds, and we need to bring those down so that they can learn about Christ. Amen. We pray to the Heavenly Father for your family in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for all the members of your family that the strongholds of human reasoning and false arguments are destroyed. We pray for the destruction of every proud obstacle that keeps members of your family from knowing God. We pray that all rebellious thoughts be captured so that the members of your family will learn to obey Christ. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Okay, so this is just an example. I took those two verses and I turned them into a prayer. You can too. There's four elements that need to be destroyed, that need to be pulled down in those two verses. And we've, we've gone over those. But what I want you to see is that if you're not praying before you go uh, to people and try to tell them about Christ, you're facing a serpent that has four heads. And the four heads are human reasoning, uh, false, false arguments, arguments, proud obstacles, mm -hmm. and rebellious, rebellious thoughts. thoughts. And so you might be addressing one of them and any one of those three heads, other three heads yes, would well. rise up and, and strike you. That, that's the way it is. And I know a lot of people that just like to argue and they've got their little pet doctrine and they... And they go and, and they argue with people, but they don't make any progress. I, I don't mind telling you, they're not making progress. I, I think about a man uh, that came into the mission when we were, we had a mission. Now, we'd, I'd already taught, we'd already fed the people, and it was everybody was beginning to leave. And he came in, and uh, I'd never seen the guy before, but he wanted to argue with me about a pet doctrine that he had. He didn't know whether I believed it or didn't. He just uh, he wanted, he just wanted to, to argue. He just wanted to argue and force that upon me. And, and it doesn't work. I, I don't care. And, and if you go uh, talking to your, your family uh, and, and your loved ones and you begin to argue with them and nag them and tell them, oh, you don't need to be taking drugs. You don't need to be drinking alcohol. You don't, you don't need to be uh, committing fornication. You don't need to be uh, doing all of these things. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just going to go in false uh, one ear and one out the ear other. and out the other because that pride is going to rise up. They've got all of this mindset. It's out there, the mindset. And so my point is we need to be praying before we present Christ to them. Now present Christ in the way that you live and, and present Christ uh, as, as you're able to Amen. by the spirit of God. But prayer goes before Hallelujah. and pulling down these four, and I call them serpents, the four heads of the serpent. Mm -hmm. they, they need to be dealt with, cut off those heads uh, before the people are even able mm -hmm. 
before they're able to hear what you have to say. Oh, it's yeah. very important that we that prayer goes ahead. And that's the reason I pray for my children. I'm praying these prayers for these for my children, grandchildren, the spouses of my children, uh, and my nephews and my nieces <laughs> and other people that God gives that are connected with us. It's a it's our household. And so these are the things that we pray, and I'm encouraging you to be praying these things. Uh, and I think about something that happened this week, mm -hmm. uh, and that is a, a woman called us uh, and was talking with Sherry and said that her granddaughter had had a nervous breakdown this uh, last week, and she had spent a week in a hospital, had a nervous breakdown. And then she was out of the hospital. Uh, she was had been had a job and was working and going to school and was under a lot of stress and a lot of other things going on in her life. And and she had a nervous breakdown. So when she came home and the grandmother uh, was uh, preaching the gospel to her, well, she just uh, tell us yeah. what she was doing. She was screaming. She was throwing things. She was very angry. Uh, she didn't want to hear anything. Okay, so she wasn't listening. And so mm -hmm. even though the grandmother was preaching the gospel to her, the granddaughter wasn't listening. She'd had a nervous breakdown. She's yelling and screaming and throwing things. And so what did the Lord say, Sherry, to The her? Lord uh, spoke to me and said uh, for the, the grandparents to get a tub of warm water and to place her feet, the granddaughter's feet, in the warm water. And when that warm water hit her feet, and then they were supposed to uh, just uh, wash her feet uh, and pray in their prayer language, pray in the spirit. N no English, no preaching to her, no teaching to her, just praying in the spirit and letting those feet soak in that warm water. And it broke everything that was on her broke and she was delivered uh the granddaughter was delivered uh she came back to herself and she began to cry she began to receive uh, the love of god that was pouring out upon her and even that night she went back to work can you imagine that even that I'm night she went back to work Hallelujah. A breakdown was screaming and yelling and and throwing things and then when you do what god says it all goes away. She but was she was delivered. She was delivered. She was delivered. And, and that's Hallelujah. what we're talking about, how to pray. How to pray. We need to know how to pray. We need to know by the Spirit. By the Spirit. What to pray. That's the overpowering that I'm talking about here, overpowering these rebel thoughts. Uh, and there's just a, a lot of them. Our children, grandchildren, are, so many people are just inundated with uh, these uh, demonic thoughts. Uh, have the roots, the demonic in the worldly knowledge. Okay, so let's just think then, let's move forward. Uh, but that's basically the idea here tonight is that we need to know by the spirit what to pray and then pray that and things will happen. You, you know, she went to work that night. That night. She hadn't worked in days, but after, after doing what God told the grandparents to do uh, and she was delivered, then she went to work work and then later she went to school and so things yeah, change amen. we amen. need to be led by the spirit of god and hallelujah the power of god that uh, that granddaughter didn't need to just be continuing her situation there needed to be that deliverance for her and it's by the spirit of god the power of god and the word of god the truth that delivers us amen. okay so let's think about somebody else and uh, from the Bible that uh, has had an assignment to possess territories uh, for the kingdom. Amen. From what became Israel, uh, the nation of Israel, uh, the uh, kingdom of Israel. And that was Joshua. He, he led an army uh, across the Jordan into Israel and he was going to overtake it. But he had, he had some instructions given to him before he did that. And that was the strategy, his strategy uh, so that he could be successful in possessing the territories. It's the same strategy that you and I need to follow. So I'm going to ask Sherry to read this 
uh, out of Joshua chapter one, just a few verses here. Let's look at his strategy. What was his strategy to possess the territory? In verse six, be strong and courageous, for you shall give this people possession of the land, which I swore to their fathers to give them. Verse seven, only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from the right or to the left so that you may achieve success wherever you go. Verse eight, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will achieve success. Okay, what, what was his success? Well, it was to possess kingdom territories. What will be your success? Possessing kingdom territories. What was the strategy he was told to use? Meditate on the word of God day and night and be strong and be courageous. Meditate on. And so what was happening then? It's the same for us. We meditate on that word, on the word of God. We meditate on it, meditate on it. The spirit brings things to alive, alive mm -hmm. to us. That we, and that's what we do. That's what we begin to do is when, when we meditate on the word, and the Spirit brings something alive, we do what we're told to do by the Spirit. Amen. The Spirit guides us. He empowers us. And uh, we can bring down the stronghold. See, they had to bring down that wall uh, around Jericho. That was one of their first assignments. Mm -hmm. And and we we see it here in, uh, in 2 Corinthians uh, 10, uh, verses 4 and 5. There are strongholds that you and I are to bring down. The walls that you and I are to bring down, it's not natural walls, it's not physical walls, but it's walls yeah. that are in their mind, the walls that are the strongholds, the fortresses that have uh, been erected in uh, people about their way, their reason and their logic mm -hmm. and how that uh, all fits together. And, and so they've already got uh, the people already have, and I'm talking about the people around you and, the, and your family members and and those connected with you, they already have all of this stronghold in them, and those have to be brought down. But our strategy is the same as Joshua, to meditate on the word of God. Amen. Let the spirit of God bring it alive to you, then begin to speak it out and pray it. And tonight, we're really talking about prayers, and it's following up on the prayers of rulership uh, that we had uh, covered uh, the last right. time. And, and so... Uh, let's let's move on then to to Jesus. Now Jesus, Hallelujah, uh, comes in, uh, in in the New Testament and and he spends time and uh, after he was filled with the Spirit, he spends time in the desert and then he goes in to the synagogue in Luke uh, uh, fourteen uh, four eight and eighteen and nineteen. 19. I'm going to ask you to read this Woo, because, because Jesus said he's come to set the captives free. Amen. That's the focus I want to look on here. Uh, and, and then think about, well, what kind of captives are we talking about? All right, Jerry, read these. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim releasement to the captives and recovery of, blind, of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. Uh, okay, now. We can think, okay, this is the natural, but it's also the spiritual. Who are the people he's dealing with here? The brokenhearted, the people who are captive. And where are they brokenhearted? Well, they're brokenhearted inside and, and uh, they're captive in their minds. Yeah. See those strongholds have been erected in their minds and they have those rebellion. So those were some of the captives that Jesus came to set free. And we are to be like Jesus and we are to set the captives free and, and to bring sight to the blind. To the blind. So uh, now there's a natural uh, uh, sight, uh, but there's also a spiritual sight. And yes. a lot of people around you that have spiritual blindness. And we're, we need to wow. be oh, wow. like Jesus, following in the steps of Jesus and to bring spiritual sight and to set the captives free. Mm, and that's all about what we're talking about tonight. 
And so we can do that with prayer, strategy to deal with people who are uh, away from God, that are turned away from God, that are not following God. We need to be praying for them and so that we can set the captives free. We can bring down the strongholds in their uh, in their minds and in their logic and thinking and all of that. And so these are some of the people that you and I need to deal with on a regular uh, basis. Now, uh, the next thing I wanted to look at was Mark, and no, I'm sorry, Matthew, Matthew chapter 12, verse 20. And this is talks about uh, judgment. And, and I liked it out of the King James, but that's the way I learned it. Uh, and others might say justice, but I want you to know that we do not judge people. It's God that judges, and he judges by what's in his word, and that's the reason we meditate on the word, and we find out what his judgment is, what he, what judgment applies in this particular situation that we're dealing with, so I want mm -hmm. you to read this here, Matthew, Matthew 12. 12, 20, a bruised reed shall he not break, and smoking flax shall he not quench, till he send forth judgment unto victory. Okay, so where's the victory come from? It's in the word. The, the victory is in Amen. the word, knowing the word, applying the word that applies by the spirit of God. So when the spirit brings something alive, that's a judgment. And, and then you begin to act on it. You begin to declare it, mm -hmm. decree it. That's you begin good. to pray it. And uh, you don't make the judgment. God makes the judgment, but the judgment's already written. We have to find by the Spirit what the Spirit is saying in the current situation. So if you're dealing with a, a, a son, a prodigal son, or a rebellious. a rebellious son, or a daughter, or a spiritual son, or a spiritual daughter, or somebody you've been dealing with and counseling with and advising, then, then these are the things you need to know and how to do it and how to pray and to realize that they've got all of those things in their thinking uh and uh, they have to be brought down uh, by prayer before they can even accept uh, being taught the true gospel Amen. oh hallelujah Amen. now although we don't we don't make the judgment psalm 149 i'm going to ask you mm -hmm. we execute god's judgment hallelujah and this is a very important passage here and if you don't catch hold of this, you will uh, think that judgments and what God has written, that it's ineffective and it's not going to apply. But see, God makes the judgment and the judgment is written. When you hear it by the spirit, then you, be, you can do what Psalm 149 says. This is Psalm 149, five through nine. The godly ones shall be jubilant in glory. They shall sing for joy in their beds. Brother Fred does that. The high praises of God shall be in their mouths and a two-edged sword in their hands. Okay, let's just pause here for a minute. Okay. This is talking about you. If you could see it, if you can embrace it, it's talking about godly ones. Or it's, it's you. It's, it's the believer. Yes. And it says you have a two-edged sword. Well, what, what is our two-edged sword? It's the sword of well, the, the spirit. spirit. And it's by the Spirit. See, then those words well, that he gives us, the judgments that he gives us, the scriptures that he gives us, and just one scripture is all you need in a situation, and it'll turn things around. It'll turn things around. So we need to be speaking out what the Spirit is uh, giving us, what the word is mm. that he is giving us. Okay, keep on reading. Yeah, okay. To execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples to bind their kings with chains and their dignitaries with shackles of iron to execute against them the judgment that is written. This is an honor for all his godly ones. Woo. Praise the Lord. You have a privilege. You have an honor. And that is to hear what the spirit says, what scripture it applies in a particular situation and you begin to speak it out you begin to pray it and that is a privilege and an honor that you have to execute judgment on the head of the enemy on the on mm -hmm. the devil himself and over all the demons 
uh, to free the captives, to bring sight to those that are blind. That is an honor and a privilege that you have as a godly one, as a Amen. believer Amen. in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Then I want to, to uh, finish this with the thought uh, that Joshua made in uh, uh, Joshua, where is it? 20, uh, 24. 24. Verse 15. Choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. For But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. See, this is a proclamation that Sherry and I made by the Spirit of God, by the by the uh, unction of the Holy Spirit. We said this years years, years ago, and when we were young, a young married couple, we proclaimed that our family, mm -hmm. our household, and that includes those people connected with us, will serve the we Lord. Will serve the Lord. And, and so that never changed. That that's the basis mm -hmm. of the prayers that I pray. My as for my household, and that's my children and their spouses and, and uh, my grandchildren and my nieces and my nephews and, and other people connected with us and other people that uh, we give uh, covering and oversight to, we're going to serve the Lord because I do not want to see any perish. See, I, I've got the same desire there that God has. Yes. In the realm that he has given me in. He desires to I, see no I, one perish. I desire to see none of those perish and spend a hell, uh, spend eternity. hell in eternity. Eternity. In, in, eternity in a devil's hell. hell. I will not have it. I'm going to keep praying and pulling down uh, those. Uh, uh, yeah, go human, over those four again. Human reasoning. Human reasoning. And, and false arguments. False arguments. And proud obstacles. From proud obstacles. God and rebellious thoughts. All rebellious are, thoughts. All of those are coming from the worldly wisdom that seems like it's a superficial wisdom. Mm -hmm. It's not the wisdom that comes from above. And so that's the proclamation. And that's a covenant that Sherry and I have made yeah. together. And, and before we had any children, we were proclaiming it and we were believing it, and we're still believing it today. Now they've gone out and they've done some uh, some different kinds of things and then they married. And and so, but that proclamation still stands. That yes, covenant still stands that our household will serve the Lord. And so we're praying. We can't just depend on that one scripture alone. We're praying. We're bringing forth prayers. And uh, like the like the uh, message I, I gave last week about uh, two David, ago. or two, two, two weeks ago, about David had prayed for his son that God would give him a perfect heart to serve God and to obey him. Well, that's I can pray that prayer over my children because yes. I have that, covenant. Yes. I have that uh, relationship uh, saying uh, with God that I have the authority to pray the prayer that David prayed because that's what the Holy Spirit has shown me and, and it's in the word and that my and that God will give my children a perfect heart not only my children but all of my members of my household that includes my their spouses and includes the the uh, grandchildren and and the uh, other people connected with us and, and my nephews and nieces and all these people that God has given me authority over and, and uh, to provide covering and prayers for, that I can pray these prayers for all of the people, for all Thank of you. these people, and, and that they will have a perfect heart to serve God and to obey him. And then I, I also have to bring down these strongholds and right. bring down these rebellious thoughts so that they can receive the gospel because it's the gospel that is going to free them, them, free. Free. Amen. them free but there has to be somebody praying these prayers to